one is your superficial aquifer, which is out in the swamps where you take a post hole digger out in the flat woods, you dig down and you hit water. And that's a water sitting on top of the clay, and that clay is going is the first part of the hawthorn. When you start drilling further down, the old timers could get below that, that limey layer or into it, and they could get water out of it. So all the settlers around here usually had either shallow aquifers or got deep enough to get below it and into this uh, into the secondary artesian aquifer. Keep drilling deep enough, you go through two or three of those. And half of the county on the eastern side, probably three of these layers of limestone. And they brought up the whole water from the last one. Over here, we're sitting on top of uh, what they call the Ocala Upland. And we're at the very northern end of it. It's not as prominent up here. But from here all the way down to Bradenton, Bradenton oh, Brooksville. It's the crest of this Ocala uplift where it rose up and pushed the Swanee and Ocala limestones up. And that's where all the mining occurred because that brought the limestone as close to the surface as you're going to find it around here. And so there was a big mine in, in Swanee County that lasted, you know, it started in the 50s and went all the way into the 70s. And it really produced the only aggregate rock that you could use in road construction. What force actually created the Ocala uplift? Was it just, you know, the it, it, there's Land. nobody has a concrete theory on it, but it occurred late in the formation of Florida and before the Hawthorne came along. And, and, but it could have been continental places kind of flexing a little bit over here. It could be just sediments in the Gulf of Mexico getting so heavy that it pushed up a little bit. So nobody really knows. Some of, some geologists don't even call it. An, uh, uplift, they call it a platform. They think it was sort of a natural hummocky area of limestone. But you know, I think there was more structural control over it, which is why it's so broken up and cracked. But as the reason this gets dry is because this is so close to the Swanee and, and Ocala limestone. And that, as soon as you hit it, water just, you know, it, you can pump millions of gallons of water a day out of those areas. These you could the surficial, you might get 15 or 20 per minute. Uh, intermediate, you might get 100. But you know, down in the floor, Dan, you can get 1,000 gallons a minute out of the ground. So, so that's, that's why it's taking all the water right now. We're going to hike all the way up this riverbed to where the river's actually going underground into a big hole in the riverbed. Oh, cool. But to me, this is the most dynamic geologic site in Florida. If you ever been down to Gainesville to Devil's Mill Hopper, they got a sinkhole off in the woods here that belongs to that Zelwyn Farms that's a little bit bigger and probably deeper than that one, or at least equal to it. And it just belongs to private property and nobody's ever messed with it. So anyway, we can just hike. Yeah. Yeah. So these are the slabs of limestone that have fallen off? Yeah, it's been undercut, see? Hot. Another little geology thing, every time you got a river, you got a cut bank and a slip bank. A cut bank, that's the side that the river's moving in. A slip bank is where it's depositing sand. So the current comes around here, hits that wall, goes that way. A lot of energy being thrown against that wall. And this side doesn't get that much energy, so it deposits the sand and it, and it uh, cuts it over there. But one thing you will notice in the sand is this really coarse really coarse sand. And you'll see, you'll see further up where you get all kinds of really coarse pieces of uh, quartz. And that's coming out of, there's, there's a, there was a sand mine just slightly downstream from here and a sand mine up in Georgia at Midway. And this is the sand that they're mining. It's really, 
the riverbed where it meandered back and forth and just laid those sandbars down. Up here, it's just cutting through and there's no real floodplain for it. But when you get further down, there is a huge floodplain. And that's if you're going on State Road 6, crossing to Jasper, on the west side of the Alapaha, all that's underlain by mineable sand. And I say mineable because it's BOT spec type sand that you can get straight out of the ground. And that's hard to find.